Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, well, good. Well, good afternoon. It is now. I know it's nearly said good morning, but we are in the afternoon now. Um, as as I've been introduced, my name's Gary. Um, I'm a head teacher at the Prince of Wales School in Dorchester, which is in the county town of Dorset. Um, we're a one form entry first school. We have 158 children on roll in our main school and then another 60 children in our preschool. So around 220 children that we're working with here. Um, and we've always had a rich dig digital ethos um, and my background is in using technology to engage and innovate learning. Uh, prior to being head teacher here at the Prince of Wales School, I was innovation director for the Isle of Port Noldridge Community Academy, uh, where we had just over a thousand pupils um, adopt a one-to-one -one approach to Google Chromebooks. So uh, my, my background with Google Technologies goes back to kind of 2012, uh, when I first started working with C-Learning and working with Google for Education um, on a range of different uh, projects. Um, and since being a head teacher, I've sought to use technology to enhance learning in what we do. Um, so really, um, where the, well, where this started is where it started with lots of people. Obviously, we had the news come through um, of of COVID nineteen and the risks that that had. Um, the school here is in a in a probably slightly um, unique position in that we also have a unit role for children with physical disabilities. So we have a number of um, children that would fall into the high risk category for COVID nineteen. Um, so some of our families, as soon as the news started coming through, made the decision early on to self isolate. Uh, we also had a family um, in the first few weeks who had come back from Thailand and were put into self-isolation. So there was a little, there was an element of prototyping what we were doing with that first family and with some of our families of those high-risk children um, when, when the news started coming through. Um, and I think when 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 there was this prospect of school being closed in some form, whether that was a, with a small closure for certain children or whether it was going to be a complete lockdown in the sort of scenario that we're in now, um, my instant thought was obviously to make use of the technology that we have as a school and make use of the technology, um, the tools that, that we have available to us through the Google for Education platform. Um, and instantly I thought, look, we're going to live, we're going to live um, cast every lesson. We're just going to carry on as normal. We're going to, you know, run um, run, run sessions like this on Meet or, you know, Hangout or whatever it may be. And we're going to make use of Google Classroom and we're really just going to go for it full wing. Um, and I started to do some trials. Um, I work with some of my older children in the school, which I say older, they're only nine years old, but you know they're, they're the top end of my school. Um, and what we found instantly, uh, a bit like adults having a video conference call, it, 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 the technology is great and it, and it works, but you've got to build protocols, you've got to build um, systems in place to make sure that you can use it effectively. Um, and, and to be honest with you, my vision of education has never been children sitting in front of computer screens all day. You know, I, I, I wanted to ensure that if we were going to have people away for us for a period of time, that, that we created some balance there. Um, and another key consideration for me, and has always been a key consideration for me as a school, is how do we make what we're going to do inclusive? Um, because I was aware that not every family member, not every one of my pupils may well have access to devices at home and things like that. So we sort of started developing a strategy and started prototyping things and started exploring things. And it all happened very quickly, of course, like for everyone, the news sort of tumbled and, and, and went fast. Um, and we went from being a scenario where we had one family in isolation to having 20 in isolation to then moving towards school closing down um, and having the potential for 95% of our children being at home. Um, and throughout that time, using the tools that we had available to us, we were able to kind of steer a way that worked for us. Um, and I'm you know, certainly not standing here saying that the methods I use would work in every setting um, because I think every setting is unique and you have to work with the tools that are available for you um, and work best for the age of children that you're working with. But what's worked really well for us is that we've used those tools of collaboration. Um, we've created a virtual um, school website, which has just been made using Google, Google Slide, uh, sorry, not Google Slides, made using um, Google Google Sites, um, and I'm not sure. I think if I do this, I should be able to show you my screen. Uh, yeah, can you, you, all, you can can you all see? Okay, so um, from our school website, we've just put a link through, straight through to our microsite. So this has just been made very simply using Google uh, Google Sites, and this started off as just one web page initially. Um, and has grown as the school, as the virtual school has grown. Um, we've been having a big focus on live broadcasts as what we've as what we've been doing because we feel it's important to provide um, interactivity, but not at a lesson level. Because 
we trialed using Google Meet for lessons and while it was effective for some children, we didn't find it particularly inclusive for our younger children because they just want to talk and engage the whole time with the teacher. And when you've got 30 or 32 of them in, in a space, that's not necessarily going to be the most effective way of doing it for young children. It's great for one to one work. It's great for small group work for the age of children that we're working with. Um, and it may well be ideally suited to working with older students. But for us, the age that we're working with, we found the kind of more public broadcasts um, have been more effective. And I'll talk through those in a minute and how those are working. Um, but I set about straight away, really, the first sort of strand was, you know, what, what systems do we have out there that we're effectively using anyway? because I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I didn't want to have to necessarily explain to all my children, you know, here's new tools that you have to be using. So my year three and four children are already used to using Google Classroom, so their work went through Google Classroom. My younger children are used to using tools from Too Simple called Purple Mash and other online tools like Accelerator, Reader, and Mathletics. And I made a conscious decision of making those links fresh and newly available through this platform. Also, they deliberately chose pictures of our children using technology to kind of tell parents that they're used to doing this and there was a kind of message in that in what we did and then each day we're putting up a slide deck through google slides that the teachers collaborate on um, and on there that they have the learning and that it really is the hub of what we do each day the children go to the microsite they click on the today button and the slideshow loads for today and it just creates a quite simple interface so for today um, there's the slideshow it's slightly different at the moment because obviously we're in the easter holidays at the moment so we're following an easter program um, so that it's more whole school learning and, and we're setting AM and PM challenges that the children are contributing to. We're pointing to some external resources that children could use. So things like the Joe Wicks. And what we're calling this is a recommended um, daily program. We're not enforcing it um, in that we're not checking up on people. Have, have you done your Joe Wicks workout, obviously? But we're just giving parents a help. And what we found is that for many of our families, that, that concept of routine and that concept of instruction coming from school has really helped things at home. Um, and we've tried to keep these fun and creative. So this is this morning's Easter AM challenge. It's to recreate a famous piece of artwork um, and then email the work in and share that with us. We've also been going back into our YouTube archive and um, playing some previous videos um, from, the, from years gone back. And then three times a day, we're coming together for live broadcasts. And those live broadcasts are going out via YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I'm using a product called StreamYard. Um, which broadcasts live to Facebook and YouTube at the same time and gathers in the comments from both of those so I can display them live on screen. And I found that that works really effectively. Um, it's a free product that you can sign through. Um, if It's free with a watermark. So we're paying, I think, £15 a month at the moment to get rid of that watermark. And that's really reasonable for the amount of times we've used it. We've done about 130 broadcasts over the last 28 days. Um, ranging in all, ranging from the sort of the common shows that we do each day, which is the Today at Power program, or the Good Morning Power program, which is like our breakfast show. These are shows that last kind of 10, 15 minutes where we encourage children to share work. It's a bit like the old broom cupboard for if you <laughs> used to watch children's TV, that kind of thing. It's just giving children a sense of community, sharing their resources, having some fun, talking, um, and also doing a bit of silly dancing and things like that at times. Then every day at 20 past 11, we're doing assembly time, and I'll share some examples of that in a second. And at the end of the day, we're kind of mopping it up with our Today at Power program. So that's kind of the basic structure of what we're doing. And then um, beyond that, we've got a few other things that we've done. So sort of some of it's been um, useful in terms of linking to the subjects. So subject uh, teachers are supporting their subject areas with just an open Google Drive where resources are being kept. So for example, some of our Power Maths resources that are supporting our maths program, parents can go into the Google Drive and they can find the resources there. And we're, we're signposting that into our daily slideshow. So the hyperlinks are going in there. Um, we've also archived everything we've done so that educators can see and have a look at what we're doing. And it's kind of uh, tracked back there in terms of time frame. So all the letters, we're doing regular communications. We're doing um, physical resource packs as well because, you know, I feel that combination of online and physical is really important so parents can go back and see that. We're also looking at some of the research and other resources that are available out there. And we've highlighted some of those for other educators. So um, this website is easy to get to if you go to my school website, princeofwales.dorset.sch.uk or just search the Prince of Wales School Dorset. Um, there's a link on our main site through to this virtual school um, and you can get access to everything there. We're also promoting um, health and well-being and we're promoting mindful moments. And, and my teachers have been contributing to a mindful moments um, Google slideshow, which we also embed into the daily program. But for anyone that needs additional support around that, 
we've got some additional resources there to support them and to click back to, uh, which again, people have found really helpful. Um, and we've had some fun with some other stuff as well. So um, for example, we've created our own soundboard. So if children are missing the sounds of school, uh, just by using a Google slideshow and then using the file publish to web option, uh, we've been able to create a soundboard that, that just clicks through um, and we're able to play the sounds uh, that you may hear around school. So teachers' voices, um, we had some ambience recordings from before the school closed and things like that. And, you know, the, people have said that they've enjoyed that and it's been fun to kind of connect in that way. Not sure why it's not loading now. So it's loading the second, I'm sure. I'm on, a, <laughs> I'm on my uh, school connection here. So it isn't always the fastest as I would like. But I'm working on that. Um, yeah. And then we've got the on demand section of our website, which is just really an archive of all the things that we've done um in terms of um different resources there can you are you all with me can you all hear me okay still yeah it's fine gary yeah so um in terms of um the on demand and i'm not sure i'm going to close that soundboard because i think that might be what i'm slowing me down for some reason i'll go back to that in a bit um in terms of the on demand i'm providing links back to all of the slideshows that we've done previously so we have the today and we have the yesterday section at the front of the website parents know that they can go to the on demand section and they can um, access any of the previous resources they can also watch back any of the shows from previously um, so a good example yesterday um, i did a um, portland which is where i used to which is where i used to teach um, i did an assembly about that island which is hanging off the edge of dorset there um, and I got one of the residents there, someone I know who knows a lot about the island and the local history. Uh, she joined me live um, and uh, we, we broadcast out and we used Google Street View um, to do a virtual tour. So we were literally going up and down. Oh, my filming's blocked that now. Um, we were going up and down the um, streets of Portland um, and my, my friend was pointing out um, landmarks and things that were there historically um, and it was just a really fun different way to engage and, and, and we had some really nice comments from parents that really liked what they were seeing and um, and you know it, none of this is complicated but it's it's simple and it's community based you know yes I could put something out there that looked much more polished it was professionally made and things like that but it wouldn't give the same level of interactivity and I think that level of interactivity is what people really need at this time you know we we hear about social distancing and i think that's the wrong term i think we should be talking about physical distancing but social integration and social um those opportunities for us to come together are, are really really important at this time and certainly i feel that the platform that we developed has really enabled that to happen and um we've had a lot of fun with that and we've kind of engaged in new ways with that and uh we, we we've had a nice response from that so this is just an example of um yesterday i managed to get it up now let's see if i can get a bit of the map up so this is um i'll take my headphones out so those can hopefully yeah. Yeah. Interesting moment to pick, but you kind of get the idea. You know, just just had just had Street View open, just had um, Lisa there on a webcam. I would normally have used Google Meet, but she couldn't use it on. Or she can well, she could have used it, but she couldn't. She couldn't get the software working herself. But we we just did it through Facebook video call in the end. So I had her open in one Chrome browser, had the um, map open in another Chrome browser, and just was screen recording and having a chat with her. And you know, Pep, we had about I don't know 30, 40 people watching that and engaging with that. And it's just really nice to look at things in a different way and kind of explore from you know a different perspective. So, you know, that, that's kind of a kind of a basis of what we've been doing. Um, we've it's not the only thing. You know, there's we, we've done a lot virtually, but we're doing a lot physically as well. We're doing daily phone calls. Uh, sorry, we, we started off doing daily phone calls. Uh, we're now doing weekly phone calls um, to all our families and daily phone calls to our most vulnerable families. We're doing food parcels. Um, we've I've just been out this morning and we've been doing physical pack deliveries. So we're providing new resources to support home learning there as well. Um, the other big thing, I suppose, from a technology point of view is, is that there's no technology left in the building. Everything here has been liberated. Um, all, all my trolleys are, are empty. I've encouraged devices to go home, and obviously using the um, Google Apps, uh, Google for Education admin dashboards made that really easy because I've just changed the inventory tag to the per child's name that's got that device at the moment. Um, put it out with a very you know one-page flyer about e-safety and um, 
you know a, a clear agreement there and the devices are gone um you know the the trolleys are behind me here and you know the, the cupboards are bare as they say you know <laughs> <laughs> and that's for me that's that's how it should be because you know those devices they don't belong to me they belong to you know my community and they belong to the children um who, who i feel should be accessing at this time and i've had a great response to that uh, when when this all started i did a survey of my parents and for our community 100 percent of them had connectivity if they didn't we were prepared to provide that connectivity using people premium funding or um, other sources of funding through our pta or through community groups and i'd already spoken to a number of people connectivity wasn't the issue but devices were many of our families had sh um, many of our families only had perhaps a mobile phone or one tablet between three children um, so being able to provide additional devices from school has significantly helped their access to learning at home. Um, and a lot of families have said to me, look, we have a laptop, but I need it for work. Um, you know, I can't have my son watching your live broadcast of you dressed as Freddie Mercury or whoever you're dressing up as today. Um, if, you know, I've got to be, I've got a deadline to meet still because I'm remote working. So being able to provide additional devices has, has made it a lot easier. Plus I know those devices, you know, are set up in the way that they're set, obviously, that we haven't changed them. We've just told the parents to connect them to their Wi-Fi networks at home. And they've got the same login, they've got the same, um, systems in place that they would have in school so I know it's a lot easier for the children to get on than if they were given I don't know their mum's work laptop to use which I'm sure is not great on loads of accounts really um, I don't know if there's any questions if there's any Gary I'm, I'm sure there's going to be uh, loads of, uh, of questions so so thank you for uh, sort of kicking off uh, that session and I know I can see from the uh, from the pictures there you know we got uh, David uh, sort of from up in East Lothian welcome David and, and Bill and Angus uh, from uh, from Bristol and, uh, and Dave from Lancashire so um, <clears throat> guys do you want to uh, sort of um, share your thoughts and any questions that uh, you've got uh, for uh, uh, for Gary and also if you uh, either by just um, sort of clicking off and, and going or or um, put uh, put your questions in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the chat Dave why don't you uh, share your experience with Gary as well yeah just click on the microphone Dave Uh, you're still not here. Click on the microphone, David, on the bottom. Sorry. <clears throat> there we are. Yeah, yeah. I just put a, a message into the chat there to say that we have found that we've got over 800 of the, the Chromebooks have gone out uh, as loan devices to staff or students, which was a fairly last minute decision based on the, the likelihood that we had some students who may have had tablets and phones, but less likely to have laptops. And it, I think it also dawned on people by this time that with parents working from home, there could well be competition, even where there was a, a laptop or a computer in the house. And it's been really good. That, the Chromebooks have been seeing steady use. We did need to make a change because um, for whatever reason, we'd set them so that they wouldn't default to any network other than the school ones. So we, we made that change, but having done that, there have been no issues at all. They've been, we can see they've been in steady use uh, and have been a, a valuable part of all this. No, that, that's uh, yeah. Great. I've always, I've, I've always been impressed with um, home deployments of Chromebooks because of that admin management console being so, um, you know, it's, it seems obvious to say, but so cloud focused. It doesn't matter where the devices are as long as they're connecting in. You can see where they are when they were last accessed, and it's been really interesting actually to look at some of the data from that um, and see kind of usage levels and uh, also, you know. Obviously, if the worst case and that happens, you know the device gets lost or stolen. Um, you've got those easy methods of locking those devices um, and you know displaying those messages, which I think is really powerful and kind of gives you some reassurance as well about the devices going out there. So, yeah. Gary, one of the things that's uh, been uh, sort of uh, impressive from 
uh, the outside is uh, the scale at which uh, content has been uh, posted uh, on uh, to your website and also the simplicity of um, your virtual um, sort of school um, sort of um, uh, classroom page or virtual school web page. Um, so, so just uh, share with everybody uh, sort of uh, why, why, how did you get the idea for the virtual um, school page? Um, and how have people, uh, how have you been able to manage getting all the content? I know you always do a lot of content, but... Uh... Yeah, I think, you know, in terms of keeping it relevant and uh, keeping it engaging, we've been making use of our whole community um, and really reaching out to people and showing how easy it can be to connect in. Um, that's been key. I've also been making use of um, just general good communication work workflows as I see them. Um, so, for example, every piece of work that a child sends me, I respond with a personal audio comment, um, which I find is much quicker than me typing a response to them. And it provides that level of personal connection, which um, could be lacking during this time. Um, and the way that I've managed that, you know, and I've got 220 children potentially messaging me. And I would say I probably get around 150 a day um, emails from pupils directly to me um, and then my team obviously are getting those kind of communications on a more individual class basis as well um, and what we've done is we've set it up so within 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 gmail we've changed our email signatures so i now have a default signature that says you're a superstar thank you so much for sharing your work with me we always love seeing what you do in virtual school please see attached for a personal comment and then I'm just using a basic MP3 um, recorder website um, to in Chrome, just recording an MP3, doing it in one take, just you know talking to them as though they're in my office and they've bought a piece of work to me. You know, each comment probably is about 15 to 20 seconds maximum, saying "lovely to see your photos, thank you for sharing with me. I really enjoyed reading that piece of work. Um, here's you know um, here's to the next piece of work. Can't wait to see what you get up to next." take care, bye-bye, that kind of thing. And I download that, upload it quickly, and it's gone. And each, I suppose each email is probably taking me less than less than a minute, way less than a minute to process in and out. And then every child's getting that personal feedback um, in a way that's unique and in and, and a way that is quite special to have that audio recording. Um, and the response from my parents has been phenomenal on that, and they've really bought into it because they felt that connection. Um, and then on top of that, in terms of the wider content, um, been making use of Google tools. So, for example, with our assembly slot at 20 past 11 each day, been making use of Google calendars so that I, if someone's interested in taking an assembly, I send them to a link. Um, I use a website called youcanbook.me, um, and I use it for my general diary management anyway. It links to my Google calendar, and it only shows my availability. It's free to use for one person. It's designed to be used by people like salons and beauticians to book beauty appointments through Google, uh, with a link uh, provide like an interface for google calendars but i use it day to day to manage my diary if i want if someone wants the meeting with me instead of instead of having that back and forth with emails going when, when can we meet i just send them that link and say book any slot that's free um there and i've already blocked out time in my diary where i don't want people meeting me etc so um i've i when this all started i started a new calendar called assemblies and I blocked out all the time apart from the 20 minutes each day when assembly is free. And I shared that link through You Can Book Me. And now you can go to a website. It's spracklin.youcanbook.me. And there's an explanation there saying, we're running assemblies. If you'd like to take part, find an available slot. And they're booked out for the next couple of weeks. You've got to click through to find them. And then the person books them. They put the rationale of what they want to talk about. And look, 99% of the time, those are going to be fine. Obviously, I'm checking the content that's coming through. And, you know, I'm not allowing some, I don't know, right-wing extremists to take an assembly for me. And obviously, at the end of the day, I'm hosting the assembly and talking to them in the, in the space as well. But it's been it's proved a much more efficient way of booking that content in. And little things as well, like we've been putting out videos. Um, we've, we've done a couple of music videos, you know, the lip sync kind of challenges over the last couple of weeks that we've released on a, on a Monday morning. Um, and normally when I do that, I ask staff to send me some footage, but every member of staff at the moment is wanting to support what we're doing. And if they all sent me video footage, I just wouldn't, I'd have far too much. And if I've got, I don't know, 30 staff sending me three minutes of footage, um, it's going to take me a while to go through and find, find the gold that I can use in the video. So what we're doing now is I start a Google doc up on a, 
on a Sunday night and I say, look, this is the song for this week. Here are the verses, here are the lines for the song. Sign up to which line you're going to sing. And please don't record the whole thing. Just record the five seconds. And then if I, for me, it was much easier to then put a video together um, that then went out there on Monday morning. So it's trying to think about the workflows to minimise additional workload while also being sensible with it. I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but that's how we've been. That's how we've been managing things. Just thinking about how does how does the information come in? How can it best be processed in a in a way that comes back in a personal fashion, but um, ultimately doesn't create massive workload. And um, that's where things like the collaboration tools with Google Slides and um, obviously Google Docs and things like that work really powerfully, especially when people are working remotely. Because I know that next week's slides, all of next week's slides are virtually done. There'll be some tweaks the night before because we'll get feedback from parents about the content that day. And some parents, you know, if we get overwhelming feedback from one class that the mass was too tricky, we may put another support video in. But generally speaking, we're about one or well, at least one week, but at the moment, about because we've had the holiday, about two weeks planning in advance of what content is going to become available. Yeah, I mean, that, that feels like, uh, Gary, that, um, you know, that you said work as, um, as as normal, using things as normal. And I guess you're, you're, you're planning your timetable um, sort of running forward um, anyway. So that that's, uh, that's great. I know that you've always been a, a great advocate for inclusivity, and it's great to see uh, both um, the work you're doing um, delivering out the physical packs as well as uh, sharing the the computers. How have you you been uh, supporting your staff? Because um, if you're providing these little uh, audio clips for people, um, is the is that sort of approach being picked up by all your other staff? And how are you supporting them uh, in in this new way of uh, working? A little bit new way from home. Yeah. So we've always had that open culture, and that's what we've always sought. To to achieve since, since certainly since I've started here where there's no stupid questions and those questions get shared so when a question comes in of you know how do I do a video of x or how do I hyperlink and there's some of my you know some of my staff didn't know how to hyperlink you know from um, say a folder a, a file in Google Drive to a Google slideshow um, and it was just a case of right I'm going to create a step-by-step -step video using something like Screencastify, or obviously you could do it through Google Meet and you can record a broadcast, or you know, if I'm using my Mac, I could do a quick time screen record. And I would then share that with all staff. So if I'm doing some training and whenever I'm doing anything now, I tend to record it um, live in the moment. I don't make it flash or tidy. I just do, look, I'm with Duncan. He's asked me how to do this. I'm going to show him how to do it, and I'm going to talk you through it. Duncan, if you get stuck, I'm going to email this video to you so you can watch it back at any point and you can pause it and you can rewind it and you can go through it again and you can do it again and again. You know, some of my stuff, you know, um, and I'm thinking about my colleague Duncan in particular, and he won't mind me sharing this, but he, he's not used to doing those sorts of things. But after doing them for two or three days and watching the video back, he's now doing it every day. So it's about building that confidence. It's not that people can't do it, it's just that they perhaps haven't needed to do it before or it's not part of their day to day routine. So just making it part of their routine when it's applicable and making it useful for learning, then. Um, I found that staff have been really amenable to that and we've done that with a whole host of things and now if sometimes I get a question I've already done a video for I say look look back at this video uh, don't watch the first two minutes because that's not relevant but the, from minute three onwards that's relevant and just having that bank of things that we can share and again that you most of these things they could google themselves and they could get a video of someone else sharing it but it's there's that personal touch with knowing that it's me or or someone else in my team that's recorded that and it's been encouraging other people to make those recordings and just share them with each other as well and and making it clear to people that you know pretty much speaking anything's possible it's just how we present it and how we do it so um some things took a bit longer to work out exactly what we'd use the live broadcast it took me a while to come across stream deck and that did exactly what i wanted it to do for the particular thing that i wanted to do and equally um playing with the soundboard took a while to get the settings right of what i wanted it for my community but you know there's there's stuff out there and other people doing things and it's just nice to share that practice and to have that discussion yeah no i completely uh completely agree um guys um ladies uh, sort of do we have any other uh, uh questions uh or um uh, comments for uh, for gary uh or uh, experiences that have been working in your uh, schools that you want to share uh with uh with with gary 
if you do just click on your microphone and ask ask the questions while you're having a little think about that i've put in a link to the prince of wales website into the chat i've also put in a link to an online voice recorder i don't know which one gary uses but it's online voice and That's also a link to screencastify yeah. yeah it's really good quality is very good yeah it's, it's really um, simple and just download straight away and then you, then you're away really it's, it's yeah. so straightforward yeah absolutely and um a link to the screencastify at the chrome store if you're not using that should you need that and um, Gary, one of the thoughts that I, I was I was pondering is what's the kind of um, workload expectation from your students? Because you're clearly not they're not going to be producing as much as they would worthy at school. How much do you expect to receive from them on a daily or a weekly basis? Yeah, so we've made it really clear that for us, the focus at the moment is on their health and well-being. That they're that they are um, in a place where when they come back. Um, that they are ready to continue with their learning. Um, so in terms of expectation, we're focusing the daily expectation, not during the holiday time now, but from Monday onwards again, we're focusing around our core our core programs, literacy and numeracy. Um, so there is an expectation that they will keep up with where we're working on those programs. Um, the reality is, you know, we're not going to chastise anyone who doesn't do that. And we're aware that some families are finding that a challenge. But we're, we're, we're encouraging families to share with us when they're finding that a challenge because I do have capacity in people to do one to one small group, you know, intervention and work. And that's what we're trying to focus on at the moment. Um, so where we know that perhaps they're already behind um, anyway, they're getting additional support through one to one. Um, and we're using Google Meet for that, though those purposes. I'm also doing one to one interventions for um, well being. So we're, I've got a trained Elsa, who's an emotional literacy support assistant, um, and she's doing one to one video calls through Google Meet, um, which has been really powerful, um, especially for those families that are more vulnerable at this time. For your uh, special needs uh, students, uh, Gary, uh, we had a great example a couple of days ago where where a, a, a student at one of the colleges, um, uh, you know, would struggle uh, occasionally. Oh, it looks like somebody's making bread. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling, feeling hungry now. Um, and uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the way the... The college worked they were the, the the person was actually getting better support um through the um the the, the sort of assistant support assistant um, sort of using the the google tools and whatever else <clears throat> and what they were saying was that um uh, because of the um the challenge the student has he will he will have uh good weeks and bad weeks and in in the past when they had a bad week um the the student wouldn't come into college uh, but they were thinking maybe in the future, if he has a bad week, they can continue to deliver uh, education uh, to the uh, student by the assistant sort of beaming into uh, into them. How's how's it worked for uh, for you? Yeah, your... so we have we have been one to ones in, um, and that's been that's been positive. I think because our children's needs are generally physical needs, it's it is harder because. Obviously, they can't provide that physical support remotely. You know, a lot of the work we do is physio, um, hydrotherapy, you know, horse riding, those sorts of things. So that that has been a challenge, and it has been an increased challenge for those children um, to um, not access because access has been good, but to do work and move forward. Now, a lot of them are very used to using technology to support their learning anyway, and they're they're amongst our highest tech users because they use it for most lessons anyway. Way. So they and they've all got specialist equipment, devices, etc. And they 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 all they all went home with the children. Um, and what we've just tried to do is provide the closest thing possible to that similar environment. Obviously, you know, particularly for our physically disabled, that isn't that is more challenged and it does place a bigger emphasis on the parents because you know it's it's fair to say that obviously their children coming to school, you know, and many of them work as well. I'm not saying that, but there's an element of respite in terms of you know, the time that a child spends in school, that there isn't that physicality of the child being at home, whereas at the moment they've got their child at home 24-7. And there's a real challenge that sits around that, that there isn't an easy answer to with COVID because you can't have, you have to have that social distancing. So, but from a technology point of view, and from an engagement point of view, they're used to using their technology. We've supported them with 
all of their devices going home um, if, if they've got specialist technology and also specialist equipment going at home. So things that they wouldn't have at home perhaps normally. So classroom chairs, standing frames. Um, and that applies not just to our unit role children. We've, we've shipped directly ourselves or through parents coming to collect tables and chairs home as well. So parents have been able to create their own little homeschool environments. I would say about 70 to 80 percent of my children daily uh, are going down to sit at a school table on a school chair using a school Chromebook and, and many of them I would say at least 60 percent of them are wearing their uniform as well so they're getting a pretty close to possible school experience with the conditions that they're working under. No, oh, that, that's really uh, good to hear. Perhaps uh, we'll have one of those um, picture boards with everybody uh, sort of in their little school, uh, home uh, <laughs> sort of scenarios as a, as a little uh, wallpaper uh, mash. It looks it looks, <laughs> looks a brilliant uh, brilliant picture. We've done a we've done a few other little things as well. So we've done um, we did a virtual India day. So a couple of weeks ago, um, our year two children were due to be having an India day where one of the parents was going to come in. Uh, who comes from uh, his parents come from an uh, you know Indi Indi Indian background, um, and they were due to lead some Indian cooking um, and do some um, Hindu prayers and some Bollywood dancing. Uh, so instead of doing that physically, we did it virtually. The parent joined us from their home, and with that day, we did a six-hour broadcast, and we had sort of three, four hundred people joining us throughout the day, um, asking questions, engaging in it, and we even had a cook along live for lunch where. Around 20 families had all the ingredients at home and were cooking along um, as 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 the as the parent was cooking along. So that was that was quite unique. We did a virtual disco as well. We used Zoom for that, and we had I think 120 connected people at that point. Um, and we broadcast that through Streamyard as well and YouTube. So we had people connecting in for that. And then we've done um, some quizzes as well. So we've done um, that's worked quite nicely. No, that, that, that's, just, that's amazing. Um, so as you go into the, the, the summer term, uh, are you uh, planning, obviously, uh, based on all the information that everybody has, are you planning uh, that this is going to uh, carry on uh, for, the, for the summer term? And then will you be um, sort of planning um, sort of uh, for the start of the new, new school year? Um, and what about... Yeah, the, at the moment, we, obviously, we've got no idea. We've got no ideas on time frames. You know, we, we obviously have to wait till the advice and <coughs> guidance is there. Um, we, we, we're continuing to work in this way. What I will be doing this week um, before we close this week is putting a uh, Google form out to my parents to get some feedback. I've had anecdotal feedback and it tends to be those parents that are happy who are emailing me, you know, quite regularly saying how happy they are about what we're doing. But I want to put a mail shot out to all my families and get feedback as much as I can and say, look, this is urgent. I need your views on our provision and how it's how it's working for you. Is is there anything that's not working? Can you give us feedback? Because I, I want the warts and all. I don't just want the positive feedback because I want to reflect on that and improve moving forward. Um, but at the moment, our plan is to continue as we have been, keep the variety, keep changing the people that are involved and getting different faces in, in and talking to people, introducing different bits of work. Also looking at the national picture and the international picture where there's some really fantastic stuff starting to come together around different things. I saw a great resource from America yesterday from Common Sense Media. They're doing, I think, is it No, no School or Non-School? Org. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great resource where um, it's very American focused, but there's a lot in there that could be used and applied. So we're finding that a lot of the things that we're now putting into our daily programs are freely and widely available, that they weren't perhaps being shared initially, but are now starting to come out. So we don't want to, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to restrict what parents can do, because if you know, if you've got a child that's absolutely hooked on Harry Potter, and you know, J.K. Rowling, obviously, and, and the Warner Brothers and the publishers have released the Harry Potter at Home website now, with a with a whole host of you know fun learning activities. Why would you not want to engage your child in that way? You know, just because we're saying that for our virtual school we're doing about Egypt today doesn't mean you've got to not stay away from that Harry Potter content. So we're trying to we're trying to encourage. What we've always done, to be honest, is 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 inspire children to learn. So. If a child is inspired to learn, then go with it and go deeper with it. Don't. And we've been quite clear on that. And we've been deliberate in some of the communications that we've put out around the fact that we don't expect you to cover everything that's there. You know, there are there are a couple of families still that have covered absolutely everything I've shared. Now they're extreme, and you know, I certainly can't replicate it in my own home. Let alone, you know, I'm the head teacher. But 
you know, if, if that works for them, great. But don't feel the pressure to do that. And my deputy head is also um, a parent here, which is helpful. She's got twins in year two. And she created a very kind of raw, frank video where she just looked into the camera and said, look, I'm a parent and this is hard. Um, I can't keep up with everything that's being shared and I'm not meant to. And she's the one that's producing a lot of the content, you know. It's, but it's just saying, you know, being really frank and honest. And we had a really good response to that um, from our parent community because I think you, there can become a danger that becomes almost like, I don't know, Instagram homeschooling or Pinterest homeschooling where everything's perfect and wonderful and, you know, children are sat beautifully and they're, they're you know, I don't know, in awe of their Chromebooks all day long because of the amazing learning that's been shared. And it's it's not like that. You know, learning is messy. It's complicated. It's raw. It's frustrating at times. And, you know, it, it will ebb and flow. And I think we need to make sure that we represent that in the communications that we share with our families. And I think we can be, there can be a danger that we're just always sharing just the positive stuff. Yeah. Um, I just want to go back to well, one slide I always share when I'm doing kind of social media, um, and I feel a lot of a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is because has worked because of not only the background with technology and the background with Google apps, but also the large amount of work I've done historically using social media and understanding social media and where there's a kind of sweet spot that sits between what's relevant and what people want you know what people want to hear about and what you want to tell them and it's that relevant spot that's really important um and that's why sharing stuff that's hard sharing stuff that doesn't go right sharing stuff that you know is is bringing us closer together as a community so i i've been quite open that i spent two weeks in self-isolation because my daughter had a cough with my community because i want them to know that we're all in this together like we're not i'm not hiding this you know they can see i was at home because you know, like I wasn't the background I've got now of the background of my home. And you know, kind of sharing that with and that's about trust and, and faith in each other, if that makes I don't know if that makes sense. But you know, for me, my school is a learning community and we're we're seeking to tackle this together. And by embracing technology and trusting each other has been a key point, then we've been able to have that jo you know, joy and, and fun together and in, in learning, which is really nice. Um, and really, you know interesting it's not about showing off about who's done the nicest piece of work and it's been about celebrating every single piece of work that's been sent to me whether it's you know some child that's done a 10 page essay or maybe it's a child that's just learned to write their name for the first time or i did have one bizarre video where a family and i don't won't, they won't mind me calling it bizarre because i think they would say it was bizarre themselves but they did a science experiment where they covered themselves in oil and tried to slide across their kitchen floors um <laughs> <laughs> which which was an interesting video which in the end i didn't show the actual video content i just played the audio through my broadcast <laughs> yeah scream screams as they hit the uh the end of yeah. you know, something they were like trying that. to see which was the which was uh the, the slickest oil to use whether it was uh, baby oil or cooking oil i think <laughs> <laughs> gary yeah. can i can i ask uh, i don't want to take away from all the fantastic things you've done and it, it's just been astonishing listening to the brilliant the whole attitude about it, the whole ethos of it has been amazing but are there any things you've done where you thought oh, that didn't quite go to plan and you've already decided to park that as a particular technique that you are using or yeah you know? so we the, the, the daily phone calls well that was our original intention but just the level of the level of work that's involved in ringing 30 families daily um didn't work um uh -huh. plus the feedback from parents was we don't need you checking up on us every single day um, we'll we'll contact you if we're if we're worried. Um, I struggled with my phone system here initially because we've got a managed service provider that manages our IP phone system, um, and I didn't get the best response to get control of that quick enough. Um, <laughs> and moving forward, if I was planning planning, you know, in terms of emergency, what I suppose this is what we're in an emergency plan situation, actually living it. Um, I would want better controls over my IP telephone system because um, being able to set up additional lines, being able to change the in-call message because a lot of the traffic I was getting through to the office, especially as we were closing the school, were, oh, what are we doing? Why is school closed? You know, that kind of thing, which could have been answered by a pre-recorded answer phone message before going through an op phone system message and could have taken some of the heat off the office. Mm -hmm. So little things like that could have been dealt with a bit better. And I've now got control of those tools moving forward. Um, and then in terms of, communicating initially i communicated that every lesson would be live streamed 
in the, in, in a kind of Google Meet fashion without trialing it. And having trialed it with a group of children, it it it, it wasn't right for what we wanted to do. Um, so that we did pull back on that and we moved to using the slides quite quickly. But the message wasn't too communic it wasn't too miscommunicated because a lot of people didn't think it affected them initially because we did that so early on, bef two weeks before schools closed, really. Um, in that, and by the time that school did close, we'd already been working for one week with the slides, and everyone was used to accessing them, accessing them in that way. Um, I think developing the workflows helped. I wasn't doing the workflows initially like that. When I first, when I first um, had work sent to me, I was recording. Of, I was doing a screencast of five for each child, so I was opening the work, talking about it as a video recording and then i was trying to share that video recording with them and most of the time it was um it was too big to share as an email attachment so it was uploading it to google drive and sharing it or i was uploading it to youtube as an unlisted file then sharing it and that was just way too much workload and the file sizes were too big and even when i did that some parents couldn't access them because of whatever device they were accessing on and there wasn't a kind of shared video formats are still a bit not completely you know universal are they because you've got the dot mov and you've the dot mp4s and different platforms open different things in different ways and quality issues and things like that so whereas mp3 with the with the online audio recorder i've not had one person message me back and say they can't open it so you know just just things like that making sure the file formats are right and things like that uh -huh. oh, one thing i didn't realize when i first created the google site is that the um the url for your google site is based upon the name of your page obviously so i had um i think my site originally was sites.google forward slash prince of wales forward slash covid19 forward slash microsite and i linked that web address to my main page but then i changed the name of microsite to home page and the, the hyperlink broke because the name had changed so just little things like that that people pointed out to me that were wrong and i fixed quickly but just you know in terms of things that haven't gone right there are obviously things that we reflect on and would do differently excellent thank you for that So I guess, uh, uh, do we have any other uh, questions, uh, Dave, uh, Pete? Uh, I know, Dave, you got, got a question? Uh, can't, can't hear you, Dev. I know you've got your headset on now. Have you got your no. volume? Wait, ah, there we are. There you go, volume. I'm not having much fun today, am I? In the sun, <laughs> here you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Yay, finally. Sorry about that. I'm having, uh, I'm having a, a, an experimental day today because I'm not actually working, but there we go. Um, yeah, really, um, really interested to hear what you, what you had to say there, Gary. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, one of the questions I had was around what your take is on the union advice, because I was senior leadership have been saying that due to union advice around safeguarding, we shouldn't be doing um, synchronous one-to-one -one online meetings. Um, what's your take on that, please? Yeah, so my my take on that has, has been that as long as um, my, my, I'm not putting any pressure for my staff to do it, um, my staff have been very willing and open to do that. Um, I've made it clear to them that we need to put a number of safeguards in place, um, so making sure that we're using um, Meet you know Google Meet for those for those broad, for those sessions, making sure that they're timetabled. Um, and making sure that we keep a record of what what's happening, uh, not not so much focused on a recording because you know we, we don't do that normally in school when we're having one to one. The people that are having those one to one sessions would be used to having them in this environment anyway. We normally, uh, in fact, for all the one to one sessions, we've done a phone call in advance with the parents, and we've always made it clear because of the age of children that we're working with, we've always made it clear that when they're using the internet, it should be a supervised activity anyway. Um, you know, we're not saying that the child has, to, the parent has to sit with the child to do it, but they should always be aware. And we're always talking to our parents about making sure the devices are in a place where you can see them. You know, so that you know children go off and do anything. So yeah, we've we've just tried to take a common sense approach, it really, and not put any, not put staff in a position where they don't feel comfortable. And that's been the case for all everything to do with COVID since we we started. I got my staff together and said, look. I don't want to do anything that puts anyone in a place where they don't feel comfortable. And I said, you need to come and speak to me. You need to say to me, you know, some of my staff have gone straight into self-isolation because they had vulnerable people at home and I haven't seen them for the last three, four weeks. And they've, they've supported us by doing the remote phone calls from home. So they've been doing well with the, with the wellbeing calls and then tracking that all through the Google Sheets. We've been using that as a system. 
it's much more easy and simple to use than our management information system. So, you know, that's that's worked really effectively as a tick box and, and a way of using the comments feature to highlight if there's an issue. You know, example, yesterday a phone call was made, the family didn't have any pencils left in the house and we made a delivery today, a big pack of pencils so, so they can carry on and they've got a big family, they've got five kids. Um, you know, they, they've got all the food they need, but they needed pencils to carry on with what they were doing with their learning. So little things like that, you know, just being solved. But for me, it's 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 continuing the ethos that we have on a day-to-day -day basis and that we don't want to put people in a position where they don't feel comfortable. And if someone's not comfortable doing it, then, you know, we either that it doesn't happen or they're supported to make to be in a position where they do feel comfortable and that might mean doing the first couple with me or with someone else that does feel confident to do it and doing it in an environment where they can join together and a couple of people have been like that with me with the assemblies and things like that they've been you know i don't want to leave on my own but i'm happy to join you and do one together through that platform so that's cool i think i think our staff were were keen to use google meet and in fact yeah. have been doing um but then after the union advice came out our slt made the decision that that wasn't appropriate and that all learning should be asynchronous as a result yeah. of that. um which I, I, think, I, yeah. I, I understand the safeguarding concerns and i understand the the rationale behind the decision but what i don't think is that that is a that's providing the best service to our learners that we could yeah. do going forward and, and i completely take your point about don't enforce that but for me i'm trying to get the message across well don't take that away that really important um sort of well-being link away and a lot of the things that you talked about you know all linked to that don't they about creating the soundboard and the videos and that kind of thing yeah it's for me it's all been about community and uh been open and and transparent with that and i think it does let it it does depend in the sort of school that you're in and the sort of community that you already have would this have all been possible if we weren't already such a strong community you know i can't answer that question because i'm in the position of where i am and you know i've i've taken unprecedented steps during this time for example i've shared my personal mobile number with every parent during this time and said if you need anything call me um, and i've never done that before um, i've always wanted to do it before but i've never took the step and i did this time not had a single call on that phone since I shared it, but I, it for me that's there was a statement there of saying we're in it together, and you know I'm not. Don't get me wrong, I'm not throwing safeguarding out the window. You know, if anything, the measures I'm doing up to promote safeguarding because I'm having better connection with people. Mm -hmm. We did have some guidance from our local authority that said um, the local authority states you cannot do any broadcast from home and i went back straight away and said look i'm doing them and i'm not stopping you know for happily to meet afterwards and you know because i'm a maintained school so there's still a degree of control although it's never very clear what the control is but you know there's a perceived level of control anyway and i made it clear look, i've the horse has bolted here you can't tell me through two, about two weeks after and then literally yesterday we had some new guidance from the local authority saying we're retracting that statement and here's our new guidance, which was more in line with what how the union had written it. The way that my local authority put it was even firmer in terms of like nothing of any description, whereas now they've tracked back a bit and said that no staff member should be put in a position where they have to do, you know, that kind of thing. So they have they have tracked back, but you know, it's kind of horse and cart, you know. Mm. things are things are moving at such a pace and people are using things i get this a lot you know people that are using zoom and things like that and you know my view on that is that you know i would prefer people using me and you know most things we are using me but as long as you make the risks clear to people and as long as you take sensible precautions you know such if you are going to use zoom for example making sure you use the waiting room and making sure that you you know use passwords and things like that and blur backgrounds or whatever it may be you know at the end of the day you know it's it's like anything you, you if you were scared of a car hitting you would never go and walk along a road would you, you know it's it's about to, it's about managing the risks is i suppose what i'm trying to get across and that's what we've sought to do all along and perhaps we've been more risky if you want to call it that than others but i don't think we've taken i don't think we've taken out of proportion risks and i think at the end of the day we're seeing the reward of of engaging our community through these platforms and for me i think that will minimize the long-term risk far greater than if we'd done nothing yeah, I would agree. I think it's it shows good leadership that guy. Um, interesting to to take that back to to our leadership team. But, uh, well, thanks. It's good. It's good to connect with you. And uh, it looked like you got a nice sun in your garden there today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Dave's birthday today? Oh, happy birthday, Dave! Thank you very much. Very kind. It it said a lot that um, I'm taking time out of my birthday to come and listen to you guys. So particularly oh, bless you. Thank you.
Well, cheers, mate. I was I was actually thinking um, while you were having that conversation, um, and it's something that often pops into my mind. I don't know if anyone remembers the the Byron report about keeping children safe online, and she draws a parallel with swimming pools in that. Yeah. Where yeah, of course, there's a, a, a very real risk of death because they can very easily drown, um, and we have handrails and lifeguards and anti-slip mats and notices, but we still teach them to manage the risks. I 100%. think that the same here applies to our adults in the situation that, that the unions are advising them not to use these things. It's about managing that risk. And something as I, I think Dave will mind me pointing this out, something as simple as thinking about the background, because we, we joked when Dave first arrived that his background was a wine rack and a bottle of brandy. <laughs> so, so a simple decision to, yeah, there it is, look, to it's move. Brandy on it now. It's my birthday. So the, the, yeah, so, <laughs> there'll be less brandy by the end of the day. But it's just important, isn't it? It's, just, it's about managing it and being sensible because the value in terms of safeguarding the value in terms of well-being for your children to have that connection is far greater than those risks that we perceive are actually there i think sometimes so we need to be sensible about the whole thing and if we listen to every piece of advice that the union gives us then i think education would be a very different place wouldn't it i think yeah. the, edu- the unions will always take the the kind of the the extreme view the safest view and we will choose our route through that often and um yeah i think we just we just needed a little bit of time to to allow things to settle down so i'll yeah. be i'll be revisiting this with uh, with our head tomorrow i think the real i think the real frustration is that there hasn't been stronger leadership from a department level around this in terms of um you know sharing that best practice and also you know embracing a future approach and i know that we're used to that with the department but in this time of crisis you know there's there's a whole generation of children that are coming through that ultimately will work in these methods that we're using you know we we we're all doing it now we're all you know freely communicating from different parts um of the uk and um collaborating on things last night i was in a i was in a zoom call with colleagues from denmark the us australia um and New Zealand talking about the future of learning spaces and the impact that COVID is going to have on school school building design, which is a real passion of mine. Um, and it and it amazes me that schools wouldn't want to prepare their children for that world, if that makes sense. And I think that's the bit that is is you know questionable really, because the the advice that's come from the DfE so far has been, to my knowledge, from what I've kept a track of, is has been a list of free resources that you know this took a long time to come and then when it did come you know it was probably far too extensive to be useful in that it, you know goodness knows how many pages long of just random resources um when they could have easily shone a light on the examples of best practice and, and i i say this from the position that i was contacting the first week of doing what i was doing by the department and i did talk with them but i've not seen any output from the stuff that i share and, and i i you know i do ask questions of why that is you know and uh, it's 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 just interesting yeah, uh, it's, it's 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 sometimes too easy, isn't it? That it that is that model of if I tell you lots of things and I've done my job. Mm, yeah, it's know. a tick, tick because, box. Well, we did share something. Yeah, so I, I've, you know, it's that thing that you, I hate, you just want to say teachers say, don't you? When they're looking at their results and they're disappointed with the results and they say, I can't understand it. I'm sure I taught that to the kids. Mm. I mean, you know, <laughs> you I know, think you, on the flip side don't... of that, we see, you know, uh, from the flip side of that, I've seen other tweets that said, you know, the government are working hard to turn parliament into a virtual parliament yet schools have done it in less than four days you know schools yeah. schools went virtual instantly yet parliament are still in a position where they're not meeting because they haven't agreed the protocols in which they meet and it and it works at both ends of the scale then you get the f- fact that some schools are doing amazing things and you know it's great hearing the examples that are being shared through this platform and others um where schools are really engaging and doing things and then you get the other end of it where parliament themselves think it's acceptable to delay meeting because they can't find the methods and the, and the, the approaches and i just think that there's just such a dichotomy between there's such a sporadic sporadicness to the to the provision as it's crazy is what i'm saying yeah it's that it's that permission to stop almost that's what he's given people whereas others have seen it as an opportunity um, yeah. to continue to grow and your students you know, their literacy levels might not be where you would want them at the end of the year, but they will continue to grow as people because you've got the balance of that well-being and that engagement and that community that you talked about right. 
so that when yeah. they do come back, they will 100%. still be inspired to learn, and you'll pick up where you left off and can continue to grow still. Um, whereas right. others see, well, actually, we're in an emergency. I'll just do the minimum to tick over, and that'll be it. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting response. I wonder if there's a link between that and that that Dweck model of a closed and an open mind, whether there are parallels to be drawn there. I think so. Yeah. Well, that was excellent, Gary. Thank you very much for that. Any, we, 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 I think we, we, people are now voting with their feet, probably got the next meeting to go to. I'm sure you've got lots of things still to do. <laughs> Another costume to wear. Another so, costume to wear, no yeah. doubt, this afternoon. Fantastic um, session, that. I'm really, really delighted you came on and spoke to us. And we are going to do the same thing again from a secondary point of view with Roger Nixon tomorrow. So do please come and join us then. Um, but in the meantime, thank you very much to Gary. Thank you, everyone else, for attending. And thank hopefully we'll see you all soon. And you get some applause from Pete there, from Pete Rafferty. <laughs> thank, thank you, everyone. Take care now Take care. and see Thanks. you all again.